Hi, we're here at Frontiers in Optics and Laser Science 2015. I'm with Dr. Joss Blandin Hawthorne, University of Sydney, Australia. Dr. Bland Hawthorne, we heard from you today on Frontiers in Optics and Laser Science on astrophotonics and the future of astronomical instrumentation and big telescopes. For those who didn't attend our plenary session, what is the most significant achievement to date in astrophotonics? There have been lots of different things, depending on what kind of science you do. I think the things that excite me most are the ability now to focus the light of a, of a giant telescope down onto an optical fiber. Um, so you imagine that, something which is the size of a basketball field, that you could get all that glass to focus light onto the end of something which is uh, smaller than a human hair. It's quite remarkable. So I think adaptive optics and clever astrophotonic techniques that focus light has been a major gain. Um, another gain is the ability to do single mode action in a multi-mode fiber. We call these devices photonic lanterns. That development started with the, with the University of Bath a decade ago and has since then really exploded. There are a lot of people now that make use of photonic lanterns. And what they do is allow a single mode action to be installed inside of a multi-mode fiber. And I'll be talking about those as well. Fantastic. Your presentation also detailed what astrophotonics can tell us about the universe. Would you please share with us what's the significance of this to the community? So I think the overlap with the telecom industry is very interesting. Um, of course, we're really driven to discover things about the, u the universe, space and stars, black holes, galaxies. Um, but at the same time, we also work with industry and we're applying many of our techniques to food safety. Some of our techniques are being used by Bell Labs, um, like the, the photonic lanterns. Um, I think in, so it's, it's that interesting overlap between what we do for what we want and what industry needs. So we've borrowed from industry and we're giving back to industry, I think, now. Um, so I think there's a very nice overlap with, with, um, with, other, with applications which are not astronomical. And that leads me to my next question. In your presentation, you mentioned the next generation of extremely large telescopes that have been started in, on construction. What do you think will be the next great leap in technology 100 years from now? 100 years from now, wow. Um, so I have a colleague, Roger Angel. He is famous for building telescopes. Uh, he is at uh, Arizona, University of Arizona. Um, and he says we should be building even bigger telescopes on the moon um, because the moon is very dark, it's very quiet, very stable, has no atmosphere to fight with because on Earth we have to fight with the atmosphere. The atmosphere moves starlight around, it makes starlight twinkle and twinkling stars are very bad for business. So I kind of like that idea that one day we'll be bu building lots of small or maybe one very large telescope uh, on, on the moon, maybe the dark side of the moon so that we have perpetual darkness. Um, so, um, I would say that's one idea, gigantic observatories on the moon, and that'll take a hundred years to, get, to, to make that happen. We have uh, many students here at Frontiers in Optics and Laser Science, and for those that are just starting out in their career, what would be your advice to them? Advice coming into research, um, I think it's, it's very important nowadays to look across fields have a general feeling for what's going on in photonics and optics and most applied sciences. I mean, I try to keep abreast of material science and nanophotonics and nanofabrication, um, condensed matter physics, applied physics, uh, um, particle physics. I think it's really important to look across all these fields and see what's going on. Try to borrow ideas from one field that you can apply to another field. At the same time, though, you do have to work hard on one thing. You cannot be a jack of all trades or a Jane of all trades because I think when you go looking for postdocs and, and you know, careers, people do know, they, 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 do want, they, they need to know what it is that you've achieved, what you've actually done. And it's very hard to achieve in lots of fields. I think you do have to specialize and work very, very hard on one application, but at the same time show an interest in many other applications. Um, other fields and borrow from those fields freely as I've been doing for the last 10 years, 15 years. Well, thank you. Thank you for your time today. Signing off from Frontiers in Optics and Laser Science 2015.